Welcome to Decision Point. Today, border states are among the fastest growing regions in both Mexico and the United States. But the last decade of boundary line fortifications and violence has really caused serious economic damage to the shared lives and the commerce along the border. And it has poisoned economic growth, especially for the El Paso border region. And that's why Rolando Pablos, the new CEO of the Borderplex Alliance, which is a, a combination of La Red and Paso del Norte Corporation, is with us today. He's here to talk about what he and his organization are going to do to help us to realize our potential and prosperity here in the El Paso border region. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so Glad good to, to be here. Yeah, well, you've been here in El Paso for four months now, so you're almost a native, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've always been a native of right. the region, so I'm just glad to be back home. Right, so now my understanding is even though you were born in Mexico, you actually grew up in El Paso, right? I grew up in Juarez and in El Paso. Okay, yes. and you graduated from? Cathedral High Cathedral School, High 1985. School. Give a shout out there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and so um, your most recent place that you lived was uh, San Antonio, right? San Antonio and Austin. I oh, believe. okay. Uh -huh. So you've been in both uh, cities that we kind of like to examine and look at mm -hmm. uh, how kind of El Paso missed the train that was going to those two cities, right? Well, you know, we haven't missed the train yet, but yes, yeah, so, uh, San Antonio and Austin have been very successful from an economic development perspective. I think uh, as El Pasoans and as, as, as members of this region, uh, we have a lot to learn from them, and, and I think they also have a lot to learn from us. And so mm -hmm. uh, I think we ought to look at uh, those two examples as examples of uh, successful economic development initiatives mm -hmm. that can be implemented over here. So you are completely confident that El Paso has the, the same potential as those two areas. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, this region is such a strong region, we just don't know it. We, mm -hmm. we don't recognize it. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing at the Border Plex Alliance, which by the way is a combination of Redco and uh, Paso del Norte Group, mm -hmm. uh, those two entities merged, uh, our number one objective is what we're calling regional unity. Mm -hmm. And so uh, our job is to bring the region together that is anchored by the cities of Ciudad Juarez, El Paso, and Las Cruces. So it's basically an effort to create an economic block all the way from southern New Mexico to west Texas to northern Chihuahua. Mm -hmm. So how does that compare, that economic block, compare to uh, San Antonio and Austin? In well, terms if of we, size and potential. If we take a look at El Paso by itself, or Las Cruces by itself, or Alamogordo by itself, or Ciudad Juarez for that matter, um, you know, it, it really doesn't compare, but once you bring uh, these these cities together, then we're talking to, about a region that has almost three million people. Mm -hmm. That's a over, lot of people. Yeah. Over 100,000 college students, uh, two medical schools, a veterinary school, uh, lots of airports. You know, so once we, we leverage these assets, then we do become a very significant player mm -hmm. at the global scale. Right. And then we also have that the great um, uh, data hub that runs underneath the city that uh, we actually did a show on about a year ago that there's a lot of potential there from that standpoint as well uh, the there's tremendous yeah, potential right, I yeah. mean we you know Ciudad Juarez being a manufacturing center like no yeah. other uh, El Paso with our military bases uh, southern New Mexico especially with uh, the tier one New Mexico State University with Holloman Air Force Base in White Sands uh, with Santa Teresa and San Jeronimo uh, I mean, we, we have all of the ingredients. We just have to make sure that we follow the recipe right. so that we can come up with a, a very good product. Yeah. Now, uh, you, we were talking about how y you n understand that we suffer from low self-esteem here in this area, right? You, do, did you detect that as well? Have you experienced that? What do you think about that? Well, you know, coming back home, um, I, I have to admit I was, I was quite surprised to see um, such tension in the air, particularly in El Paso. Uh, th there seems to be a tremendous amount of divisiveness, animosity in the air. I, you know, I, I can only speculate as to why, but you know, we have all of these things that divide us. We have a mountain in El Paso that divides us. We have a river that divides us. We have 
all these state lines, federal lines that, that divide us, and we've kind of fallen into the trap in allowing ourselves to be defined by those boundaries. Mm. And so I, I see our job at the Borderplex Alliance uh, to basically erase those, those barriers. These are all psychological barriers that we once and for all have to put aside mm -hmm. and, and, and make sure that instead of looking at those things that divide us is focus on those things that bring us together. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a community, for whatever reason, there's tension and animosity. We have to set that aside. We have to put the negativity behind us and focus on our children, our grandchildren, ensuring that our parents and grandparents are, are well cared for. And by uh, being a house divided, we'll never get anywhere. And mm -hmm. so I believe that if we uh, can be the catalyst uh, uh, in the uh, uniter for uh, the region, uh, we can then focus on competing globally as, as, as one region, one voice, rather than um, you know trying to uh, compete amongst ourselves and, in essence, get nowhere, which is basically uh, what we've what we've got today. Yeah. Well, what do you think um, uh, you can do, or what have you begun to do to bring those barriers down? Well, the toughest job has been to convince people. Yeah. Uh, in all parts of the region that working together as a region will benefit the region as a whole. So usually it's competitive. Very competitive. Mm -hmm. um, I have to tell you, you know, trying to convince folks that, you know, if something positive happens in Alamogordo, that it will impact El Paso positively, that it will impact the rest of the region. If something positive happens in Ciudad Juarez, same thing. And so we have to be thinking in terms of positive net benefits for the region rather than for the sub-regions within, within our space. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, if jobs come to Las Cruces, if jobs come to Alamogordo or Santa Teresa, we should all uh, be grateful. Yeah. Uh, if jobs come to Ciudad Juarez of El Paso, everybody should be jumping for joy. Instead, right now, there's a sense of competition. Why didn't I get it? Or why, why didn't, didn't we get it? Or That's right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, we are one community. You know, anywhere in southern New Mexico, anyone in southern New Mexico that wants to travel uh, via air, they, they're more, more than likely they'll come to El Paso to use the airport here. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when El Pasoans want to go skiing, more than likely they'll have to go through Alamogordo to get up to Sierra Blanca right. and Klakov. So And stop at Caliches on, <laughs> along the way in Alamogordo. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're one region, we're one community, but we've allowed ourselves to believe otherwise. Right. We've allowed these barriers and these uh, uh, very parochial uh, mindsets to dominate. Yeah, right. And if you look at other regions uh, around the world that have successfully marketed themselves, a perfect right. example is the Research Triangle in North Carolina. Right, yeah. You know, they, they, there are three cities. Yeah. And you know what? Whatever lands in that triangle is good for all the cities. Yeah. You know? And that space isn't any different than our space here. Right. But again, I go back to allowing ourselves to let these artificial barriers dictate to us how we uh, behave uh, as a community uh, when we try to promote ourselves uh, on a global basis. Yeah. Yeah. And so using those strengths, leveraging our respective strengths from across the region, focusing on those elements that, are, um, that bring us together, like border infrastructure and military base retention. I mean, we have to make sure that our military bases are protected. Right. Uh, we have to make sure that our children are educated and that we have a strong workforce. Uh, you know, we have to take advantage of our resources like the sun, you know. Uh, renewable energy is very, very important uh, for the future and we have to make sure that, you know, we get on that bandwagon right. so that we don't lose out on it. Yeah. Well, one of the places that you want to begin also is, is in how people think about and how they talk about your organization, right? So. So you look at the Borderplex Alliance as kind of a temporary name, is that, is that right? Are you looking at, at possibly rebranding that or thinking about it differently? Or? Well, the challenge here is, is that we are developing a, a regional uh, economic development organization mm -hmm. that transcends borders. And so we have a binational economic alliance. And so we have to be able to have a, a brand, a name, that speaks to what it is that we do. It, which is a unique alliance, actually. It's a right? unique alliance. Yeah. It's the only one of its kind that we know right, of in right, the world. Right. 
Uh, and it's a unique region because we have three states and two nations, no other place that in the world like it. That is crazy. <laughs> so it, 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 it's, it's our best friend and our worst enemy. Yeah, right. right? And so what we're trying to do is make sure that the region is named properly. Mm -hmm. so that the folks in southern New Mexico as well as the four folks in northern Chihuahua and West Texas all feel that they're part of this in region. Included, yeah. Included. Right. You know, the name El Paso del Norte doesn't, doesn't really resonate with southern New Mexico, right? right? Uh, that's sure. an example. Right. Sure. And so for me, you know, uh, this region has been a trade corridor for hundreds of years. Sure. You know, the Camino. That's a heritage. It's a heritage. Yeah, that's, right. that's really one of our biggest strengths right. is that we have been the Camino Real. Right. Uh, for hundreds of years, you right. know, the Spaniards uh, would use the Camino Real to get from Mexico City to mm -hmm. Santa Fe. Right. It's been a trade corridor. And so what is it w that we can use as a name that will help us identify ourselves, give ourselves that sense of identity, but also go out into the world and mention the name and mm -hmm. people will know what, what we're talking about. about. Like right. we say Silicon Valley, right. Four Corners, Bay Area, right. you know, all these, all these uh, phrases that are used to identify places, we don't have one. So right. we first have to identify what that name is. Right. And then our organization needs to be representative of that. Right. And right now Borderplex Alliance uh, is not resonating particularly with the folks in, in Mexico sure. because Borderplex uh, is, a, is, is, a, is a term that is uh, you know, it's a, it's a spinoff from Metroplex, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not playing well. So, you know, our hope is that we can identify a name for the region and a name for the organization uh, that uh, gives everybody that warm and fuzzy that they yeah, need. Yeah, you got to have that. And, mm -hmm. you know, scripturally speaking, um, name is very important. You know, a name embodies uh, the essence of the individual. And so from a biblical standpoint, people's names changed mm -hmm. based on their role and position and what God was going to do with and through them. And so, so a name, name is very important. And I, and I would say that from a, a scriptural perspective, although that may not be your, your primary reason for doing it. But um, not professionally, but personally. Personally, is. okay, yes. yeah. And so, yeah, I, and so that's something that we can certainly, our viewers can be praying sure. for, is that God would show everyone who's involved in the naming process what is the right name, and you know, and, and I, I think you'll just know it when when it, it happens. Well, I certainly appreciate yeah. that because yeah. we do need that, and you know, we need to have something that gives uh, the people of this community a sense of pride, right? You know, a sense of of self worth, and uh, the ability to recognize. The the, the the wonderful assets that we have, mm -hmm. the blessings that we have right. as a community. We we tend to focus on the negative, right. and yet nobody, especially in this arena, really sits down and, and, and creates a list of all the great things that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, it's starting with our wonderful weather here. Yeah, you know, right. It is our great wonderful thing. people, right. and so uh, we we really need to also pray that we can change some mindsets. Right. And, and put that negativity aside. Right, yeah. Well, you mentioned that, that um, Austin and San Antonio in particular are role models of excellent economic development uh, success and that we can learn from them. What, what is it that we can learn from them? Well, you know, their right. efforts haven't been without challenges. Sure. And so it, it hasn't been something that they just cooked up and, 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 and uh, are now uh, enjoying the fruits of that labor. Uh, but if you were to ask me, you know, what one component of their strategy uh, stands out the most uh, uh, that really led them to the success, and that is unity. You know, coming together as a community, identifying those assets that you have, promoting them with one voice, mm -hmm. and, and making sure that as we are out in the world communicating the virtues of this community, that we all do so um, uh, together, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and you, what you do is you set aside that, that competitive spirit. It's human nature, but you have, it's also, you know, kind of a, um, uh, one of those things that you have to learn to set aside so that when you invest in this community, you're investing for the, 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 the good of the entire community and not for any personal gain. Yeah. This is all for the community. If the community um, attracts uh, economic prosperity, then everyone within that community will benefit. Yeah.
And that should be the ultimate goal, is economic prosperity so, for all. So what, what kind of specific things are you talking about? Well, first of all, what, what we're talking about is, you know, making ourselves attractive mm -hmm. as a community. You know, we cannot expect f to go out into the world to, and attract investment without ourselves first looking into the mirror Mm -hmm. and making ourselves attractive. We, right. ha we have a lot of challenges in this region. Mm -hmm. The good news is that there are a lot of excellent organizations already working to fix that. So like, what, what are you talking about in terms of attractiveness? Well, a, a perfect example, and this is what my wife and I went through, the exercise we went through when we were looking to move back home. Right. Education. Yeah. Are, are kids gonna have a good education when we move uh, to El Paso? Right. And so, you know, the good news there is that we have excellent people, particularly now on the El Paso Independent School District, um, you know, uh, changing right. perception. Right, we and, have Dee Margo and, and uh, You know, I, I, I am so grateful to Dee for taking on that role. Right. It's a very tough role, yeah. but it's something that is needed for this community because when we go out and try to sell to corporations, hey, come to El Paso, one of the first things that's going to come up, well, how are your schools? Yeah. And, that, and, and if, it, it, and if I can't problem, say yeah. with a straight face, you'll have great schools, then we're not going to be able to right. attract them. So we, what we've done at the Border Plex Alliance is come up with this pithy uh, uh, phrase of uh, focusing on our four Qs. We need to have quality of life. Right. That means that our families need to enjoy life. We need to have good education and good arts and culture and entertainment, those things that are very important to families. We need to have a good quality of place, which means that we need to have affordable and reliable electricity, and El Paso Electric is doing a terrific job in that. We need to have ample water supply, safe water supply, good road infrastructure. Ted Houghton is doing a great job at TxDOT. Uh, we need to have good government. We need to make sure that our government uh, is a government that is uh, pro-business and supports those investments as they come in. Do you think the new mayor's going to help with that? Absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, like he, you know, he, he, this is a terrific opportunity yeah. uh, for our city where we have someone coming in with a fresh set of eyes, yeah. uh, with enthusiasm, with experience in business, yeah. uh, someone who can provide the leadership that we need at this time, very crucial time. We need to focus on quality of, of workforce. Yeah. Our workforce development is hugely important to companies. As they look to come here, they want to know that they're going to have a qualified pool of applicants as they uh, look to hire individuals. And finally, we need to have uh, a very solid quality of, of industry. We need to have the supplier base that is needed for these companies when they come here. And that's why small business is so important. We need to, we need to be very protective of small business we need to get government out of small business. We need to make sure that small businesses are allowed to thrive uh, because really that's, that's where the base sure. of the entire economy really is. Yeah. You know, And when you have these mom and pop businesses uh, beaten down by regulations and uh, over taxation, then, then, then you can't expect them to grow. And so we also need to focus on making sure that as a community, we're very supportive of small business. Okay. What are we, what are we not doing to support small businesses now? What are some of the roadblocks? Well, I just mentioned them. The re I, I so think regulations. Regulation and, and taxation. Bureaucracy. Well, yeah, yeah, regulation, taxation. Those are, those are extremely um, burdensome um, issues that, 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 that uh, small businesses face. Yeah. You know, the ability to obtain financing. That's also something that um, we need to work right. on. The banks, with the banks and right. so forth. Yeah. You know, the right. banks do a great job and they're limited in their abilities, but, you know. Right. So, how about um, the whole issue of uh, looking at the way that we as a community look? Um, you know, again, that a lot of people think that, that um, you know, that we talk about downtown redevelopment and all that. Do you think that the ballpark is going to help that? Do you think that's that indebtedness is going to be a good thing or would you rather not go there <laughs> no i'm happy to go there because you know in order like they say in business in order to make money you have to spend money right so in order for us to make ourselves attractive we have to invest as a community right. and i applaud the citizens of el paso for approving uh, the quality of life bond I think that's essential. You know, we need to be able to have those elements in place that help us as we go out and sell this mm -hmm. community, help us point to centers of excellence that um, are attractive to people. I think having a strong and vibrant downtown 
is one of the recipes of success of San Antonio and Austin. Right. You look at San Antonio's downtown, you look at Austin's downtown, my goodness, it's, it's really what uh, attracts people. That is the magnetism that we need over here. Yeah. And having a strong downtown mm -hmm. where we have people living downtown again, right. where we have businesses, where we have entertainment, you know, that is the heart of the community. And same thing for Las Cruces. I think Las Cruces is doing a, a fantastic job in re redeveloping their, their downtown. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in Alamogordo, I mean, with that uh, White Sands Avenue going through there, yeah. I mean, that is such tremendous potential. Right. Uh, Ciudad Juarez is trying to do the same thing. And so if you look across uh, uh, the entire country, you will see communities investing in their downtown. And to me, a ballpark in downtown, you look at Houston, you know, that has, um, you know, their baseball mm -hmm. and basketball arenas yep. in downtown and the commerce that has been created around that mm -hmm. and the convention business that that's generated. Mm -hmm. My goodness, I mean, how, how do you say no to a vibrant downtown? Right. And uh, the, the, the efforts uh, of bringing that to El Paso, uh, you know, are, are really to be envied and I can't understand why people would oppose it. Uh -huh. Well, that's interesting. And so you're trying to, once you kind of get El Paso, how long is it going to take El Paso to become attractive? A long time. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do. Yeah. You know, but by promoting ourselves as a region, mm -hmm. it, it'll, it'll be a, a shorter route, you know, mm -hmm. because there's so much to offer as a region. And so that's why we're so focused on making sure that we incorporate Southern New Mexico, West Texas, and Northern Chihuahua into this effort so that we can go out there and try to bring that focus to the region. Now, once these investors look at our region, well, then it's going to be up to each individual community to make their pitch as to, uh, uh, you know, attracting yeah. that investment. But what our job is, is one, to make sure that this region uh, is recognized worldwide, that we're seen as a competitive region. Uh, and, and the other component is making sure that we have a seat at the table in Washington and in Mexico City, in Santa Fe, in Austin, in Chihuahua City. From, uh, from a governmental perspective, we have to make sure that we have representation at the table. You know, when we have our military base uh, uh, talks going on in Washington, we need to be there. Yeah. We can't be absent. Right. And so we need to have a seat at that table, and so the Board of Plex Alliance uh, is going to provide that. That is something we really haven't done uh, from an economic development perspective mm -hmm. is, use, is, is to use advocacy mm -hmm. as a tool for developing our economy and for fighting for what is rightly ours in this yeah, region. Sure. Um, what are the uh, key industries that you're targeting to try to bring in uh, to the border plex region? Well, uh, you know, we need to make sure that we focus on uh, putting on our list of priorities uh, what they call a knowledge economy. We need to make sure that we focus on high paying jobs, attracting high paying jobs that, requir that require high skills. Mm -hmm. And so that is in the tech industry, biotech, medical, mm -hmm. uh, anything to do with innovation is very important. You know, our strengths obviously in the region, you know, with military, with education, with manufacturing, you know, we have to take advantage of that. We have a tremendous asset in I-10 and I-25 coming through here. Union Pacific building, the uh, multimodal in Santa Teresa is going to really be a, a boon to this economy here. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, what they've done there uh, needs to be recognized and Union Pacific needs to, 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 to be thanked for that. I think um, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to bring a lot of prosperity to the region and, uh, you know, making sure that we focus on uh, renewable energy, like I said, El Paso Electric and, and, and the water utility, um, you know, are, are doing a great job. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can't miss on the opportunity to also look at uh, renewable energy research and development. You know, with UTEP and its engineering department, uh, with NMSU and the Tech de Monterrey and the other universities mm -hmm. in the region. I mean, uh, anything that has to do with renewable energy needs to be uh, considered particularly energy storage, battery technology mm -hmm. is the future. Mm -hmm. And so we have a great opportunity to focus on that and, and, and I think you know if we do, then we can really create a solar energy hub uh, on a worldwide level here. So this is gonna take, we're talking what, a decade, two decades? Well, let me put we things really in perspective see? for yeah. you. So the city of Houston, um, in 1986, started the process of creating the Greater Houston Partnership. 
which is their economic development arm. Uh, 86, okay. Somewhere around that time okay. frame. In 89, 90, uh, they began to create their strategic plan. Uh, you know, and, and, and these times it may be off, but it's around that time where Houston had just suffered a tremendous economic mm -hmm. decline, and they got themselves back up. Um, and so, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's barely uh, now that they're seeing a tremendous amount of success. I mean, Houston is, is uh, an economic powerhouse, uh, but it, again, it wasn't by accident. A lot of that had to do with the strategic plan, a 15-year strategic plan that they laid out. Mm -hmm. The challenge that we have here is that, you know, we have to first uh, clean up some things, and then we have to plan for the future. We have to help Ciudad Juarez with, the tar with its tarnished brand. Right. Uh, we have to make sure that um, that perception uh, it does not become reality in the eyes of, uh, of the world. Yeah. Uh, luckily and hopefully we, we have all of that behind us with Ciudad Juarez, but Ciudad Juarez is within our community and we have to make sure that we help right. Juarez yeah. rehabilitate its brand. Right. And the way you do that is by consistently putting out positive messages. Right. Uh, using strategic communications to your advantage uh, and, and, and being on shows like this one and talking about the reality mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the positive nature of what we're trying to do here. Yeah. Now you are a man of faith, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you, do you, does the faith component come into this at all, do you think? I mean, obviously, um, from a business perspective, uh, in your you know, dealings and so forth, but from a personal perspective, how does the faith component, what well, do you think about God blessing this effort? Do you think he wants to bless this effort? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, um, what I'm asking folks mm -hmm. is to take a leap of faith mm -hmm. because uh, there's nothing that I can show you today that can uh, convince you that we will be successful. What I can show you today is uh, the faith of the people in this region and uh, in and, and the positive things that are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but unless we come together, uh, we're not going to really be successful. Yeah. And I, I have uh, tremendous expectations, tremendous faith that we can get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way you do it is simply by bringing people together. You know, uh, there's a saying, you know, you want to be one who uh, adds and multiplies and that subtracts and divides, right? right? And yeah. so we are adding and multiplying. And the way we do that is by uh, asking for people to take that leap of faith. Right. And yeah. that's what we need to do. Right. Well, that's a wonderful note to end on. And thank you so much for being with thank us. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Do you think Mr. Pablos has the right approach to bringing economic prosperity and God's blessing to El Paso? Will you join me in praying for the efforts of the Borderplex Alliance. Let us know what you think. Thank you so much for watching.